struggles between man and woman and the reason why. Let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. A couple of days ago, my brother Soul from Immortal Minds, Conversations with Soul, brought me onto his platform. And a couple other brothers, uh, my brother Kid, Lane Kid, and my brother Phil. Uh, and the topic of the day was plagues of the relationships or plagues of, the re of relationships. Basically what kills relationships or what sickens them, what weakens them. And uh, maybe 20 minutes uh, towards the end of that session, uh, we brought on a young lady and uh, that, that was listening in, in, in the chat room. <clears throat> and um, yeah, it was, a, it was a powerful session, man. And uh, you guys go check that out. Immortal Minds, Conversations with Soul. Uh, that particular video is titled Plagues of Relationships. Powerful, powerful video. But towards the end of that, that session, uh, there was a, a disagreement between me and my brother Phil about uh, some wording or some terminology or the meaning of some terminology in the Bible. And, uh, you know, just men, men sparring, uh, no disrespect. That's just what it was. So when the session ended, you know, uh, I asked my wife, I asked Yaya, I said, what'd you think about the session? Because she was uh, in the back room listening. <clears throat> she was tapped in listening. So she said, uh, I think it's, it went well. It was powerful. She said, but uh, you, you cut Phil off. I said, huh? She said, yeah, when, when y'all had that little back and forth towards the end, you cut him off. Uh, you know, she was alluding to it, it was offensive. And I said, nah, I said, that's just how men, men communicate. That's, it's not a big deal. She said, well, you asked me how to go, and I'm just telling you. So I said, okay. I said, but I don't think it's a big deal. But to make sure, I reached out to my brother Phil, and he confirmed it was no big deal. Uh, coincidentally, uh, my brother Soul, whose platform where we're on, reached out to me to thank me. And, um, you know, so I gave him, uh, got his opinion, what he thought about the exchange towards the end between Phil and I. And he said, I didn't think it was a big deal. He said, I thought it was healthy disagreement. Now, this isn't to come down on, on Yaya, I come down on my wife, but man, it really highlighted something that's so important between men and women and the communication between men and women and the differences and how we communicate. We, we communicate totally different. And when she saw that exchange, she's hearing and, and viewing this exchange between Phil and I from a female or feminine viewpoint with feminine ears. And she's projecting because she's projecting on how it would come off if she said it or how she would receive it as a woman. Men are totally different. My brother soul is absolutely correct. It was healthy disagreement. Uh, that's something I think women struggle with. I know they struggle with that, having healthy disagreements. Uh, I think maybe, man, I can count on one hand the times I've seen women have healthy disagreements without yelling or cursing or being disrespectful or condescending. Um, yeah, I, I probably count on one hand the times I've seen it. So typically what happens, you know, women will avoid confrontation 
or if they have to have a disagreement or a healthy disagreement with someone, um, it gets emotional, it gets disrespectful. Um, there's a breakdown in the way they engage and communicate or need to communicate. And that's the big difference with men, that most men know how to communicate with one another. Um, Cause most times we are forced innately, we know, or forced <clears throat> to check our ego at the door and to keep it respectful because we know where things can go. You know, there's always that shadow there or the presence of violence um, with men. And, and we know that, or, or death, it can go beyond violence. And, and we know that. So typically, there's always respect, man, a level of respect at how men communicate. Now, you will see uh, cowards act a certain way when they're in packs, when they're in groups, when they're in a crew, a gang, and they have an individual outnumbered. That's when you'll see a lot of disrespect and uh, a lot of brazen and boldness uh, with the mouth or, or mannerisms or actions. But typically, man to man, it doesn't matter the size, height, strength, weight, stature, doesn't matter. Typically, men are gonna communicate in a respectful manner. Uh, not so with women. And we have to really understand, man, that there's a big difference. I see so many times where men are expecting women to communicate, to receive, or to deliver in a way they would receive or deliver. And women are expecting men to receive or deliver in the way they would receive or deliver. And it just doesn't work like that. Um, I can't communicate like a woman. A woman doesn't even want that. She, she may think she, she wants that, she doesn't want that. Uh, she'll lose all respect. But I hear so many women say, or I read in the comments um, about different situations. I see women commenting that he didn't have to be so direct. He could have said that in a different way. Uh, why is he so brash? That's men. We're direct. We're brash. We typically don't beat around the bush. And uh, that's, just, that's just how we are. You know, we're domineering. And women are, are totally opposite, man. A lot of times you got to pull, question, pull stuff out, figure it out, be a mind reader when it comes to women. Uh, typically. And so we're different in that way. Uh, our deliveries are different. And I think we have to, well, I know we have to be mindful of that if we want relationships to work. You know, and it's a shame that this isn't taught to us at an early age. You know, I remember being in the fifth or sixth grade and uh, sex education was taught. We had to go into class in this particular class, and they, they were teaching us about sexual, sex education and the reproductive system and how it works and puberty. Uh, I think they even mentioned some, you know, gave us uh, a breakdown of STDs, I, I believe. It's been so long ago. But definitely, uh, that class was about the reproductive system and what happens during puberty on a, on a, on a uh, surface level. But we need to be taught the difference between feminine energy and masculine energy. We need to be taught that. We need to be taught um, tendencies of females and tendencies of male. And what actually happens when, we need the straight truth of what actually happens when puberty hits. You know, I, I see, I've heard throughout my life, uh, People tell boys, young boys, when it comes to being physical or, or hitting or, or anything like that or fighting, uh, girls, don't do that. She's a girl. Don't do that. But they never say why. They just say she's a girl, but never really go into detail. When in actuality, 
before puberty, most girls are stronger than boys. So you probably should be telling the girls don't hit the boys uh, before puberty. Uh, I done got beat up by a girl in elementary. My cousin, my female cousin used to handle my brother before puberty. I've seen many guys get handled by girls before puberty. Now, when puberty hits, that mother nature starts preparing that girl's body to be a mother, to be a nurturer, to be softer, to be, to be a landing pad, right? To be comfort. And so when puberty hits, her body, she loses muscle. She gains more body uh, fat. Uh, her arms get fatter. You know what I'm saying? Her thighs get fatter. Her hips spread. She's been prepared to deliver, to carry and deliver a baby. And once that baby is born, to be a comfort, a nurturing, a soft person to nurture that baby. Whereas the boy hits puberty, he starts building more muscle mass, bone mass, muscle mass. He gets stronger, you know, because he's been prepared to be domineering. So his body can handle certain things outside and be able to protect and provide. So there's a switch that goes on. And uh, we're not taught that. That, that is never broken down uh, to us like that, in the, uh, at least in the public school system. And it needs to be so we can better understand one another. And we need to understand, it needs to be taught how women or females typically communicate and how they receive things and deliver things and how guys receive and deliver things typically. And uh, if we're taught that at a young age, I know um, relationships will be healthier and, and probably last longer. Now, um, it's probably not a good thing for the system for us uh, to have healthy relationships. You know, that's, man, that's gonna cut down on domestic violence. It's gonna cut down on divorce. Uh, it's gonna cut down on child support, alimony, um, you know, certain killings in domestic cases. You know, it, it's gonna cut down uh, on babies out of wedlock when we better understand one another and uh, the hormones of a woman, the hormones of, of, a, of a man, uh, estrogen, testosterone, those things need to really be explained in depth and, and give it and deliver to us raw in its rawest form so we really get it as young people. You know, years ago, uh, you know, Yaya has, has twins, fraternal, boy and a girl. Now, the girl at the time, uh, they were about 15 at the time, and uh, they're grown now. They're about 25 now. But at the time, they were like 15. The girl was stronger and bigger than the boy, taller. Man, she had, she had, she had him beat in height by a few inches. Yeah, he, he's pretty short, and she was tall. For, for a girl. And she had more muscle mass. Uh, she was just stronger. And she would pick on him. She would bully him, pick on him, um, hover over him. You know, it, it, and it, telling her to not do it just wasn't enough. You know, um, she got joy out of being able to do that. And uh, she just didn't believe he could physically handle her. And hey man, she she gloated in that. And so I got tired of, you know, giving a sermon about this. So one day I said, and I knew the switch had happened. I knew the puberty switch had happened. I saw her saying his mustache. I knew he had wet dreams. I knew what was going on, right? And but she would never let up on him. So one day I said, All right, enough of this. You you think you can handle him? Yeah, yeah, I think I can. I know I can handle him. All right? I said, okay. I said, hey, get right here in this circle. Right here. <clears throat> I said, no kicking, no punching, no hitting. Straight wrestling. Got to wrestle. Go. 
They linked up. They grappled one another. They're going at it, saying who can get the upper end. They did this for about, man, maybe two, three minutes. And before you knew it, man, he picked her up and dumped her. She got up trying to kick him. I said no kicking, right? She got up trying to kick him. I said, whoa, let's go again. He got her again, flipped her again. She was embarrassed. I said, now nah, that's enough. I said, respect his masculinity. Respect his masculinity. And he'll respect your femininity. But you can't be acting masculine, trying to hover over a young boy that's becoming a man that's just because you're taller than him and you think you're stronger than him. And at one time you were. Like I said, before puberty, typically girls are stronger than boys. And uh, but when the switch happens, you know, it, it switches. He has the upper hand physically. And I knew this, and she didn't know this, but after that day, I never had to preach. I never had to give this sermon to her about respecting his masculinity and about her not bullying him and hovering over him. Never happened again. Uh, it's a good lesson. Unfortunately, you know, I had to take it there, but it was a good lesson for her to learn. And, uh, but if she was taught at an early age about her body, his body, his temperament, her temperament, the tendencies, I don't think that that happens. You know, I don't think she takes that position with him throughout their childhood. It would be a healthy respect. And uh, that's what we got to work on. We can't depend on the public school system, of course. But we got to start at home, teaching our boys and girls about themselves, about nature, uh, the power, the power of femininity, the blind side of femininity, the power of masculinity, the blind side of masculinity, and how both of you can come together and form a powerful union. With the boy, my opinion, there should be, uh, because we're both, all of us come from male and female. So although I'm a man, there is feminine energy in me, a portion. I, I have a woman, I've come from a woman. So um, I think men should have maybe 85, 90% masculinity and about 10%, 10% femininity. Uh, you know, 10% to where, you know, you can't be walking around like, like, like you're a damn brick. Like, man, you got to have some softness, man. You got to have some emotion that is feminine. Emotion is feminine. So you got to have some emotion. Um, but for the most part, men should be logical. That's the 90%. They should move on masculinity. Uh, Women, just the same. 90% femininity, about 10% masculinity, right? Uh, women are typically emotional. But at some point, man, you got to be logical. And uh, if it come to, comes down to it, you got to know how to be aggressive and protect uh, if it comes down to it. You know, if someone's trying to harm you or harm you and your kids and your, your man's not around, Man, you got to tap into that masculinity and do what you got to do. Uh, but you shouldn't be walking around like that, ready ready to squad, ready to fight, ready to protect. Uh, no, man, like, no. <clears throat> For the most part, you should be a nurturer. That's just my belief. And so uh, that needs to be taught, man, in the homes. Because, like I said, we can't depend on the school system. Uh, it's not created to bring unity. It's created to form, create workers, and to cause conflict and division. I, I truly believe that. Um, I truly believe that. I even have a, a, a chapter, or I call them drinks. I believe it's drink three, conflict resolution, in my book, A Toast to the Men. And I talk about that, how conflict resolution is not taught to us in school right that's that's a problem 
And it's really not even taught in the home. Right? It's just a lot of fussing most times in the home, yelling. Or you get over there, you get in that corner, or y'all leave each other alone. Come on, that's that's not the way to do it. Let's, let's sit down uh, and break this thing down to kids. The reasons why. Let's dig deep. All right? Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, from me to you, love, peace.